What's going on everybody? This is a continuation of our first run with the SCX-10 III. This is the basic run we did with the Capra and the SCX-10 III down the trail. Trying to find a uh, better place with no water to run the Capra and to really try it out with these 2.2s. You know, it's pretty funny, on our way to this spot, and even with the wind blowing at us, we could still smell cooked motor stuck on my backpack. That's pretty much all that we smelled the rest of the day that we were out. Kind of funny, looking back on it. Oh man, not a wind blow, I definitely smell it. Oh dude, it's like reek, dude. Mine burnt up, but it didn't get smoked out like yours. Oh dude, it smoked. I looked down in there, dude, and I could just see it pouring out of that positive turtle. Like, even when the 1.9 or 8 burned up, it didn't even smell. The two twos worked good along the trail, but not so much for crawling. Um, I'm running an E-Flight battery that only has 1350 milliamps. It's a 30C battery, so it really doesn't have enough punch. When you get these wheels up to something and you're trying to slowly crawl over it, it just wasn't working very well. So I have switched back to 1.9s with a steel ring, so they're a bit heavier, but at least they're a smaller diameter and the battery doesn't seem to have as much problem. It's not overreaching with all the leverage of those taller tires. You'll really see right here what I'm talking about where I try to go up slow and it's just not having it. You really have to kind of punch that throttle to get it to go over anything. Even though we didn't find our rock pile to run the capper on, we ended up hanging out here for a really long time, just kind of soaking up the sun, enjoying being out in nature. It had been a very long time since we were able to get out of the house. It felt good. You know, like I mentioned earlier, the 2.2s on the Capra with that battery ran really well on the trail. You can see that here. I mean, it just wants to roll over everything. I'm really glad that we went with the deadbolt body on the SCX-10 III. I think it looks really cool, even with the red rims. We honestly haven't taken it out very much after we took it out this day. James is a bit concerned about part availability and the portals and stuff, and really doesn't want to take it out until certain economic things change in the world, which I don't blame him. Richard's waiting for me to get out of the way. He says, gone are the days of slow. Look at that. You can really hear the clicking in the SCX-10-3 here. And this was before I went back through the trans and switched all those pins into the round slots. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to check out this video on the top right hand side. Because if you get one of these things and it clicks, this will probably help you out a lot. This thing is doused in mud. She a dirty girl. In case you're wondering why we would be so concerned about parts availability, have you seen us crawl? If you have an SCX-10-3 and it sounds like this, do yourself a favor and check out that video. Yeah. 
You know, I've mentioned it in a few of our other videos, none of our vehicles get a free ride. Everything gets punished. The Capra, no exception. I think this is also the reason I went back to 1.9s on the capper because when you put the 2.2s on there you just kind of want to hit everything like a basher. I don't know what it is. Since we shot this video I've actually gotten the Bomber 2.0 that has 2.2s on it and I think the capper is still going to get punished but it's not going to be punished like this. Um, I think it's going to be punished along the rocks crawling on things it probably shouldn't be crawling on just to see if I can do them. I know I said that I wasn't going to take the capper along any kind of water, not having a waterproof servo, but there was no other terrain to crawl on really that wasn't along the water. Go figure. Since we captured this footage, I have gotten a waterproof servo. I still don't plan to take it along too much water. I'm definitely not going to submerge it like we do the SCX 10-2s, the SCX 10-3, or the Enduros. You know, we've got a Sendero now to go along with Trailwalker. You know, we got the Wraith 2.2, the Wraith 1.9, and now I have a Bomber. I think all those are going to get submerged a bit in water, just for the fun of it, but I don't think the Capra is going to. I honestly don't think that the SDX-10-3 is going to get uh, submerged too much either. Um, trying to take those transmissions apart is just a pain in the butt, and that's something you got to do frequently when you submerge these things. So I really, really wanted to see the capper crawling with these 2.2s, and you can see what I was talking about. As long as it's just rolling over something simple, it does okay, but you really have to punch it. And I could really feel the battery straining with those taller tires. I have found a better battery, and that's coming up in a future video. I will try the 2.2s again with the better battery and see if it makes a difference. but. When we captured this footage, I was just very frustrated trying to get this thing to go over certain things. If you're watching this video and you're on the fence about whether or not to get into crawling, I would suggest at least giving it a try. Finding somebody that has a few crawlers that's willing to take you out and let you run their crawler. For the longest time, we were very adamant about never getting into crawling. We thought it was boring, thought it was stupid for the most part. Six months into it, I now have six crawlers, and James has five crawlers. And as stupid as it may sound, we actually spend a lot less money crawling, purchasing all those vehicles, than we do bashing. You're not constantly replacing parts, it's a lot more relaxing. You know, we hang out at our local hobby shop a lot, Remote Control Hobbies, Baltimore North, and when we're in there, we always suggest it to customers who are looking for something new. And we always get the same story, you know, nah, that's boring. We show them our videos of us doing it, and when they finally go out and do it themselves, they really get into it, they really enjoy it. It offers different types of challenges than bashing. You actually become a better basher when you crawl a lot, I don't know why. Um, that seems to be the case with me, and it seems to be the case with Hot Rod. I think it just gives you better control over the transmitter, more articulation. Our bashing skills have increased exponentially due to crawling. All I smell is cooked motor! What's the result? I don't know if anybody else has found that to be true. Let me know in the comments below if you think I'm crazy or if you've noticed that yourself. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you liked it, please hit the like button on your way out. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that bell. And we'll catch you on the next one.